All right, everybody. Welcome to episode 65 of Empty the Bench. Tom Bano here along with Nick Federa and Nick Morgison. Gentlemen, not a lot of topics. We're finally back to a short amount of topics, but man, do all these topics this week pack a punch. By the way, and when I first started talking to the guys at the beginning of this week, there was a baseball story. We'll save it because I don't want to give it away now, but... I thought that was going to be the top headline. Did you? Would you agree? We thought that was going to be the nope, top. Yeah, we were we were prepping as if that nope. was going. To- well, we were prepping for it, but I was telling you guys, yeah, no, we, no, we, no, we know, we know. It's like wait for it, wait for it, wait and for it, and yeah, there it is. and then all shit breaks loose, and COVID is rearing its ugly head all over again. Right, but now, b- b- fifteen minutes before we go on the air, we have another breaking story involving football, but before. Yeah. But before we but before we go there, let's give everybody a quick rundown what we're going to do because I think that'll help when people go back to look. So okay. we have the NFL COVID situation. We're going to talk about that. Uh, we have the NBA protocols; those came out, and I think a return to the bat phone is coming. I have some breaking news on that, and we're going to cover a Major League Baseball story, which is very unfortunate for someone who was an ALCS MVP this uh, past off season. And we have football picks and a bunch of other stuff. So let's go. But, but before we get into that, so a little more info on basically something that we gave you guys a little cliffhanger about last week. So, yes, this is going to be our final episode of 2020. Now, if you remember in our last like last year in our unspoken days, normally we would take two months. I mean, two, not two months, two weeks off. But we decided with a lot of... 2020 you know being what it is you know and we have a lot of content to look back on we decided we were going to take the month of december off take all the holidays off but we're still going to do uh some stuff so a plan that we are going to have is we're going to look back on 2020 because we were thinking you know we usually do like a year-end awards kind of thing but we were just got like how do you do a year-end awards thing for 2020 it's kind of impossible to do you You really can't you, so you have an issue here where you're like, because when we've done the year end awards the past couple of years, you're like, oh, look at all the positive things. Look at all the big moments. Well, was there a positive? I can't well, tell. I mean, you had World Series victories. You had the Dodgers winning for the first time in 30 yeah, years. Yeah, but even then that was spoiled. Yeah, but even uh, then, yeah, yeah. Right. Even I mean, then yeah. we ended up talking about COVID. Right. You had the Lakers. It, it, it's an oddity because you had both LA teams winning for the first time and being on top of the sport. That's probably hasn't happened in many decades. So, I mean, that's cool in that regard, but mm-hmm. getting up to that point was very bizarre. So what we are going to do is something now, I don't know if this title is going to stand because these guys are hearing it for the first time, but we're going to do something, a little series called the road back in which we are going to first take a look back on the sports world shutting down and then each sports uh, leagues journeys basically to come back and play again plus a couple here and there like little sidetracks on some other issues that took place during the year i.e the civil unrest within the u.s uh the washington football main controversy so basically uh next week during this normal time slot i'll give a little spoiler we're actually going to re-air an episode from our podcast days the, which our, was our first after the entire sports world basically shut down. That that was an incredible day. I remember when the three of us oh. were, were talking about the pandemic and where we were. And all three of us were trying to figure out our work situations. I work in the radio business. You're working for the, for the uh, New York City. Nick's working at home doing medical reports. And all of a sudden, the city gets turned upside down, uh, uh, along with the rest of the country. Yeah, so it's more really in- been a lot to get through, and we uh, figured that this was the best way to sum up what 2020 really was. So more, perspective. so more information on the schedule and what each week is going to consist of, uh, you can find on our Facebook and Twitter accounts sometime after the show today. But let's get right into our story. So first of all, before we get into any of the stories that we talked about, we have some breaking news here that we have to discuss. So the Lions, the Detroit Lions, have officially fired head coach Matt Patricia as well as general manager Bob Quinn. It's about time. It's about a year too late, if you ask me. What took you so friggin' long? 
It's get, get, did, did they fire Matt Patricia's pencil too? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, him and his, him and his uh, riding scooter also, right? Oh, God. you know what it is? I, I, this is what happens when you hire Patriots proteges to be the new Belichick. It's not going to work. And I, and I know before you guys say Joe Judge, it's not going to work. Well, well I mean, as I say, I'm gonna say head coaches can work, you know, like with the trees and all of them. Because I remember they were um, who were the Patriots playing last week? Because they had the tree of Bill Belichick and they had the tree of. Uh, they you know, were Watson. playing the. St- uh, no, they weren't. They were playing. Damn it, not the Cardinals. Yeah, my um, my brain is kind of scrambled eggs today. Oh, the Texans. They're yeah, they're playing. The oh, right. Yeah, yeah, they're oh, playing. Romeo, the right? Hmm. Was it Romeo Cornell? No. Okay, but my point is basically, Bill Belichick. There's been some six, uh, you know, a success here or there, but overall, a lot of disappointment. Um, but the coaching tree is a massive failure. Right. The coaching tree is a massive. Here's the thing. You can be a success. You know, you can come from the Bill Belichick tree and be a success, but everyone, the problem is everyone wants the next Bill Belichick, which I, I got know. more breaking news. So they announced who the interim coach is just now. Okay. So Lions offensive coordinator Daryl Bevel will take the reins as Detroit's interim coach. Uh, so before December, there are three of those in the NFL. Bevel joining Atlanta's Raheem Morris and Houston's Romeo Cornell. Those were all announced. Albert Breer on that breaking news then. So, so basically this to me is just, you know, hey, le- you guys are going to take the reins for the last, what, five weeks or so? Just just get us through yeah, the end just, of the season. Just get, us, just get us through. Just You are the spare tire. You are the donut of the, of, of, of the, of the NFL. So just get us to the finish line well, with some dignity intact. Speaking of spare tires, it seems like we're going to need a lot of those in the NFL due to the whole uh, COVID-19 pandemic outbreak. I call it an outbreak at this point because somehow the Ravens had, what, like a span of 13 or 14 positive tests in like three days? All right. Was so it, it, sounded, it, it felt like it was long. It was uh, shorter than that. All right. So let's let's take a journey, boys. Let's take a journey through this week with the whole Pittsburgh-Baltimore game. Now, of course... Pittsburgh Baltimore was scheduled to be the final third and final game of the Thanksgiving schedule. It was going to be the best game of the NFL Thanksgiving. Yeah, it was going schedule. to be the only watchable one. But as it turns out, uh, there were four players, uh, at least four players, if not more, who tested positive. I think those announcements came on either Monday or Tuesday. I know two running backs, Mark Ingram and J.K. Dobbins, were among the positive cases. And basically what happened was as the number of cases kind of increased over there, they said, we may be able to get this game in in week 12, but not on Thursday. So for the first time since 2005, we only had a Detroit game and a Dallas game on Thanksgiving. The- by the way, can we laugh at the Cowboys, by the way? <laughs> they got their asses handed to them. They got carved like a turkey on Thanksgiving. They're still in first place, so no. I mean, they have a shot for no. They're they have a shot for first place, but they're out of first place. The NFC least at its finest, everybody. The Washington. We could have a situation where Washington and the Giants will either be tied for first, or we could have it where the Eagles. They're both half a game behind the Eagles. Uh, and they're all have four wins. Yeah. Okay. Can you say effing disaster at this point? That just might describe yeah. the entire NFL in 2020. It, it might. Yeah. It, it's it's pretty apt in this situation. But as so, far as I was say, yeah, so yeah, let's take it through the rest of the week. So then we get the news on Thanksgiving itself that in a round of testing that took place on that day on Thanksgiving, Lamar Jackson tested positive. Well, COVID nineteen. One also before Lamar Jackson. I think Larry Fitzgerald tested positive also. Well, I was talking about the Pittsburgh Baltimore yeah. game itself. Oh, yeah, he, yeah, sure he was, yeah. General, but yeah, so yeah, so we find out Lamar Jackson test positive. I saw you put that up, and you kind of had this like uh, deer in the headlights reaction on Twitter. Like, well, shit. Well, <laughs> was it well? Shit. 
Wait, wait, was it well shit or well balls? I don't remember. I, 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 no, I said well, I said, well, yeah, well balls. Well, well, well balls. You know what well, it is? It's <laughs> and there is no, there is no other reaction to that but this. But look, we actually have a culprit in this case because this was apparently all brought down by a a uh, Ravens strength and conditioning coach that Correct. supposedly broke protocol and has been disciplined by the team. This is not, mind you, I must clarify, this is team discipline, not league discipline. This is also, I was also say, this is this is also an allegation from the team. This is like you said, also a punishment from the team. We don't know who the strength and conditioning coach is, and HIPAA laws and all that might By the way, that. I think we all agree on this point that because this person caused the pandemic, they need to say who it is. I you they can't. should. You you I you, said they should, should but legally you can't. can't. You yeah, can't. But- but you have a whole issue on your hands now. Where I, under- I understand that, but HIPAA oh, laws being trust me, are- I think, trust me, with how COVID sometimes, it, well, I would say was, and now it seems like going again is here in the U.S., I feel like there could be a COVID exception to HIPAA, but unfortunately, but, there's not. But now we're seeing mm-hmm. it trickle down into the Pittsburgh side where James Conner is tested positive. Well, yeah. say, but, but, but remember, I would say, but the Ravens haven't been around the Steelers. So and it's their, they have their own situation on their hands. I just don't understand. So I saw the reports that this Ravens coach was, I think, not even following protocol. Like they were outside doing Not something. wearing a monitor because apparently they have, they, they have some kind of tracking program in place, which right. is kind of creepy when you think about I it. I say that's creepy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's more health monitoring. It's, is- yeah, I, I understand it, it's for it's for public health services, and I get it. But out of context, it is really creepy. But, but, we're, but we're, we're focusing on the wrong thing. The thing we need to focus on is that we have somebody who broke the rules. We saw this happen with the Raiders, by the way, where they had a massive outbreak due to people from the outside of the Ra- Raiders organization. Now it's happening with the Raiders. We saw this with the Titans this season when the Titans okay. had yeah. they, said they had massive scheduling issues, and then it later found out from a journalist who snuck onto the scene that apparently they were holding practices at you know, yeah, some college football. I would say, say so, some unpermitted, unpermitted practices at a high school football thing. Nobody was wearing masks, and you and you were able to see in one of the photos, um, Tannehill. Basically, there. Yeah, was not was not wearing a mask. Mm-hmm. This gentleman is, I think, uh, exemplar. It is more of a. It's basically the NFL's uh, COVID COVID you know strategy in microcosm, which Correct. is to say that they have no strategy, which is to say that their unified, a unified way of, of combating this was never going to happen because they don't do things like that. Like I said, there, like I've said for weeks now, their, their approach to COVID is basically just, no, no. Basically, basically he doesn't want to listen. And unfortunately, and for younger people cover your ears, if you don't want to hear this, Roger Goodell is taking a shit on the floor and not wiping it up at this point. I mean, well. Yeah, he basically. So, what hasn't he done that with? What crisis has he not screwed so, up? So, so, so to, to just end the context here, as you see in our thing. So, the Pittsburgh Baltimore game has been rescheduled. It was originally rescheduled to take place tomorrow, one fifteen. It has now again been pushed back to Tuesday night football, basically. And even then, that's not. There's no certainty. But if we do have Tuesday night football, the Baltimore Dallas game, which was scheduled for Thursday night, would be a double. We would have double Monday football again in week 13. We would have no Thursday night football. What, what I don't understand here is if you had the 13 or 14 positive tests, in my opinion, three days is not enough for contact tracing. Well, I was going to say, it's I mean, we we're talking about, we we're talking about the whole situation and the NFL, you know, lack of, you know, the lack of caring and the fact that players, you know, Pittsburgh and NBC, who was supposed to broadcast the Pittsburgh Baltimore game, lost their Thanksgiving game. Basically, you had Steelers players before 
within the last couple of days complaining that Baltimore should have forfeited. Oh yeah, they were going ape shit on Twitter to the point where they were like, "Why are we well because they lost their bye week originally due to a COVID pandemic with the Titans." And that and that's another situation that you're talking about here. Pittsburgh and Baltimore were in a previous COVID situation during week 4 and week 5 when all that COVID madness was going on. Both their bye weeks are gone. So if this game can't take place Tuesday, what are you going to do now? Either week 18 or they don't play it. This is what the lack of a unified strategy from the but, league does. But this is my point, that Roger Goodell is not doing what he should be doing as the commissioner of the NFL. He needs to wake up. He needs to stop it with, I understand businesses need to make money, but spend the money, keep your players safe, do the bubble situation if you need to, and stop. Well, you know Mark Mask, who we love and follow on Twitter with all his updates. I think he put it best. Unfortunately, this is a year where, you know, they just care about getting through the season. They don't care about everything else. They don't care about the human cost it's going to take. And if a player dies, they're not going to care. That's going to be on Roger Goodell's. I, and I would not expect Roger Goodell to do anything much in the same way that I would not expect a monkey to all of a sudden know how to solve algebra problems. Yeah, but this is mm, but I was going to say, I, I was going to say, we aren't at the situation yet where we're talking about a potentially a player death. But I think if that happened, you know, I think there were good, there would be American political pressure and everything that might force Goodell's hand at that situation. I don't know if you can say he wouldn't. And, then they'll, have, and then they'll have a moment of silence and then just keep going on the way they, the way they have. Time out. So we have the Ravens with their 13, 14 tests. Let's move on to a few other teams. The Broncos. The Broncos just had a mini break out of their own with three or four players. Yes, they did. And no. we figure out what the hell went on there. Then you had a Browns player, a Falcons player. Larry Fitzgerald. Larry Fitzgerald, Larry. who came out and that was broke. I thought there were rules in place that if we had a outbreak, they were supposed to shut down for the week. Okay, so let's talk about that end of the spectrum. So there, instead of, I guess because the week has already started technically with Thursday and it seems like they want to get tomorrow's games in, the NFL has issued a memo of sorts that basically says Monday and Tuesday, unless you are playing in Monday night football or Tuesday night football, your facility, your teams, your practices are shut down. How does that stop people from being around people on the outside, though? It doesn't. It doesn't. But it, gives, but it gives them cover to say, hey, we did everything we could. It's a, it's a, it's a butt-saving move is what it is. It's I was going to say, it's it's basically, let's say maybe they are doing everything that they could, but there's a catch to that. They are doing everything they could without a bubble because how many times did they did we, did we say bubble, bubble, bubble? You know what's critical and we're missing this year? I, maybe most people know, but some people are just mm -hmm. fucking this out. The Super Bowl is being played in a bubble. Why is it? I don't think that's been confirmed yet, has it? It has. It's been confirmed that they're playing inside Raymond James Stadium in a bubble for the Super Bowl. So oh. why? I, I thought you meant the entire postseason. Like, I don't think they confirmed the entire postseason. Just the Super Bowl. So if we're playing the Super Bowl, which is the most coveted game of the year, we agree that's the most coveted game of the year, right? Mm -hmm. so, By a country mile, yes. So why are we not treating everything else? Like it needs to be played in a bubble. I, well, I don't well, have an answer on this. Well, I'll I'll be I'll tell you because you know what's going to happen with this Pittsburgh Baltimore game, and I've said this is going to happen. Well, I can't say it's going to happen. I have said personally that I think it's going to happen. I don't know if this is going to be the situation, but you got to do week eighteen. You got to do week eighteen. You got to take that bye week between the conference championship and Super Bowl away, and you you just got to get. Because because they were talking, I just said they were talking about previously doing the whole postseason of bubble. I think gonna, we might have to get to that point. I'm going to steal a page out of the Nick Federa book right now, which is basically until they lose money from a game where where they lose a game due to a cancellation due to COVID, they're not going to do the bubble until they lose money. Is that right? I would, Nick? I would yeah. To to be honest with you, I've. I, I've been absolutely astonished at the number of mental, the amount of mental gymnastics that they've done to justify not doing everything they could to prevent this from spreading. But uh, again, it's the NFL. I mean, negligence bordering on criminality is pretty much their raison d'etre. But I, but my point to you was that until they lose the actual money, they're not going right. to do. It. 
Yeah. As, well, I'm saying, but this is a situation, like you said, if this does not, if, because I, I'm, in my honest opinion, if you get like two more positives between now and Tuesday, I you can't play that pitch. I would, ball ball game. I would say if you get even one more, then you might have to cancel. Probably. And, I mean, but remember, we're talking about 13 or 14 positive tests. Right, right. And I'm saying if that's the case, that then the league is going to be forced to take action. Oh, and, and by the way. That's not even the other teams. Right, right. Oh, and by the way. Yeah, it's not. I, by the way, also, if that game gets canceled, if I'm NBC, I'm going to the NFL and saying, if you don't give us a game to make up for the fact that we lost our Thanksgiving game, I'm going. we're going to, we're going to sue. Ouch. Oof. I think they're contracted, though, that they are owed that game. Yeah, they're playing the game, I think, on Sunday at 1.15. They're no, supposed no. To, I mean, uh, right. Tuesday. It was supposed to be Sunday at 1.15. Now it's Tuesday night. Right, right. No, but I'm saying if they lose that game, the I think the NFL is obligated to give them another game to make up. Oh, yeah. yeah. They might have to give them another playoff game. They might have to give them, they might have to give them yeah, a playoff game, or they might have to give them one of the Week 15, Week 16, you know, Saturday games that normally their own network is supposed to air. This is so he's always, bad. He's always wanted a week eighteen, but I'm willing to I'm willing to wager not that under these circumstances. No. Yeah, not not like this. Not like this. He wanted more labor for cheaper money, not due to right. sick. I'd say, and and if you go to week eighteen in that bubble format, they said they might do a sixteen teamer. So I, I said know. I wanted more RAM on my computer, not a goat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get to some other stuff here. So NBA. Nick, so the preseason schedule has been released between November, I mean December 11th and December 19th. Teams are going to be able to play four games. I, I think th they can play up to four games, but isn't it only against like two opponents? Because I think New York, the Knicks are playing like two games against Detroit and two against Cleveland. Well, I want to make sense of the reports that came out from Mark Stein. So he said a couple things okay. yesterday. So. Everyone has to report back. I think it was yet by yesterday. I think or today. What's today's date? Today is the twenty eighth. Yeah. Report by the twenty eighth into their uh, their market so that they could take uh, test test. Yeah. PCR tests. And they all had to pass. I think three negative PCR tests before they could uh, go out and into training camp. The rules are four players, four coaches. It's a one to one ratio. On the, on the practice floor. At a time? At a time. So that was the big thing that they were trying to figure out. Uh, let me see. Teams are scheduled to begin training camps Tuesday with individual workouts kept at four players and four team staff members at one time. With all those participating required to register three negative PCR tests. That's number one. Number two, players who wish to take part in individual workouts starting Tuesday, as well as the coaches and team staff members who will be working them out, must be back in their markets by November 28th, which is today to begin right. COVID testing. Number three, December 4th is the soonest date for full team practices, but teams will have to wait until December 6th for first group practice sessions unless all players reported by Saturday to begin testing. NBA exhibition play is scheduled to open December 11th. So, Man, so that's, that's mouthful. So that's, that's the big report from Mark Stein. I'd say that's, that's a very small amount that they're doing, and it's already more than what the NFL is doing. Yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's, exactly, that's exactly it. They know because the NBA is a player-driven league. You, uh, all three of us, know that. Everybody knows that, and they know no players, no profit. So therefore, you must do every. You must treat every single one of your players like it's the friggin' hope diamond. For God's um, sake! I left out one more thing. So this has nothing to do with the protocols. This has to do with the whole mm -hmm. thing itself. So Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN released that the NBA laid out COVID nineteen protocols. For all training camps, 134 page outline. Damn. 134 pages. Well, I mean, the NBA was the I first tax forms that took up less uh, took up less space. <laughs> well, the NBA was the first league to get shut down back in March when uh, Rudy Gobert, I believe it was, had the whole uh, the whole the whole mic touching thing. Yeah. Wait, I found something interesting in the story. So, under the time based resolution. The infected person would have to either have gone at least 10 days since the date of their first positive test or onset of any symptoms. If they have had any, gone at, uh, at least 24 hours since their fever went away without using any medications. So if you get COVID, it's 10 days for you. At least. 10 days at least. 
what they're really looking for is the end of symptoms and the end of rather uh, the end of symptoms rather than any kind of preset date point because mm-hmm. COVID reacts differently in every human body. It really depends. Oh, so and on again, top case by case basis. After the ten days, they have to spend two days working out and pass the test. So it's a minimum of twelve days. Okay, so like twelve days at least. Yeah, so it's twelve days at least. So you're if you're positive, you're you're lost for two weeks, essentially. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, so basically the COVID uh protocols for the NBA essentially it's it, it's it's essentially a modified MLB fifteen day IL. Yeah, it is it is essentially a modified fifteen day D, uh IL. I By the say, way, yeah. <laughs> People are going to ask about the roster size, so I have that here as well, and traveling party. So pay attention when I when I say this stuff. So mm-hmm. as the league confronts the reality of teams having to crisscross the country in order to try to attempt to complete the 72-game regular season, now that's a key number because usually they play 82 games. They're playing 72 because they, in their right effing minds, they thought that these athletes were going to go to the Olympics, which is never going to happen. So they have a 72-game season – and the playoffs, and it, the NBA has imposed a limit of 45 people for any traveling party, including up to 17 players. Well, I don't mm, – I was going to say, I'm, I'm trying to think of, like, you know, all the people that would go. I was going to say, it doesn't seem as bad because you don't need as many people for the NBA as you do a traveling NFL team or a traveling MLB team or a traveling NHL team. You know, but 45, I mean, it's a it's – a, it's kind of a smaller limit, but I mean, it's kind of sounds necessary. Like sounds like a lot. Okay, I, 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 I'm just saying. Well, you're the NBA person, so you know more than me. But oh, no, no, just, no. I think in general, traveling in a pack of 45 is a lot. Just like mm-hmm. the CDC. I mean, Nick could could attest to this too. In CDC guidelines, they were trying to stop people in Thanksgiving for having ten or less people oh. at the dinner table. Oh, oh, from from a CDC perspective, you know, absolutely, I, that yeah. is a lot. I'm, I'm I'm saying from an NBA team though, because I'm saying oh, like no, you don't need. If that's pretty normal on a travel. Okay. okay. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how the NBA works, and I think the NBA did well, but they're going to run into issues because they're going back into the arenas again. Right. And I was saying, and I don't know if. And they're gonna have to um, what's it called? Like they want people in, like they want like what is it, twenty five percent capacity at least in the arenas? Oh, I'll that's give you. A, that's what they would Nick, like. Nick, I'll give you one crazy number. I think I told you this time already. Okay. The, the Golden State Warriors. I told you this number. Now, Nick, hold your breath when I say this number. But they want to fill fifty percent capacity. Not gonna happen. Yeah, like that's going to happen, and I'm going to sprout wings and fly over the Grand Canyon. I'm gonna say I'm, this. I'm, no, I I think that twenty five percent capacity is high, in my opinion. I think so too. Way well, too high. Way. Well, well, I'm just, I'm just saying, but they're gonna have to. But every state is different, and they're gonna have to follow the rules of every state that they're in. They can't they can't say, oh, we're the NBA, so we're gonna follow one uniform thing across all fifty states. That I'll give, I'll give you one more issue here, which this news came out uh, over the last couple of days. Governor Newsom in California has right. come out and actually put the stay at home mandate on again. So I, it wasn't like minimum 10 days for that mandate. I don't know how long, but he made a mandate where any gatherings are not allowed right now in the temporary being. So I don't know what that means for the Lakers. Uh, actually, I think we confirmed the Lakers, the Warriors, the Clippers. No, but I think we confirmed that the Lakers and the Clippers at the Staples center are, are not going to have fans all season. That was confirmed already, but with this stay-at-home order, now you're adding more to this whole situation. So, right. uh, what does that mean for your preseason workouts? What does that mean for your preseason games? In my opinion, just they're going to have to play without the fans. Like twenty-five percent, you're going to get COVID disaster all over the place if you have twenty-five percent. Oh, well, well, keep in mind, Toronto has already been forced. Re- they're not going to reopen the border for the sporting events. So, to, the Florida. Raptors, right? That the Raptors are going to have to play in um, Tampa, right? Right, they're playing in Tampa, Florida. I don't know where exactly, but um, I'd say I think in the Lightning's arena. In uh, oh, yeah, because you can't use the other arenas because you have uh, Orlando, you have Miami. You can't split a arena. I mean, I guess you could if one's on the road. Uh, the um, Emil, Emil, Emily Arena. Is that the Lightning's? Uh, yeah, that's the Lightning's home. 
I was say the, the the one that WWE was just using for their Thunderdome or whatever that was. Oh, like when they when the COVID was just kind of starting no, with, with all the fan screens and everything. Oh, got it. Okay, but long story short, I feel like the NBA's uh, top execs are more intelligent when it comes to understanding the situation that it comes to their players. The NFL, on the other hand. They're throwing stuff against the wall and hoping it sticks. Well, one last quick thing here, because Nick brought it up before the show. Now, let's say the vaccine comes in. You know, you have to give it to the players. But you, you were saying, Nick Morrison, that there were side effects going with this first uh, trial of vaccines going around. You know, would the NBA, you know, be willing to do a minimum, like two weeks off, or to get everybody the vaccine, even though they're on the time? They don't have time. But that's the thing. They don't have the time. They don't have the time. The preseason is going to be here before you know it. The, the NBA is actually officially back in training camp today. Today is the first day. So they can And they want to get most, as I say, pretty much a full game because it's 72 games, but then you got to add in the play-in tournament and a full playoffs. They want to get that done as in a shorter amount of time, like two months less than a normal season. Believe it or not, they're not going to say it, but it's really 82 to 90 games. Right. Where you want to slice it? And I, I don't know if they're gonna. I don't think they're. I think I don't think they're gonna get all this season in. I think I'll be honest. Do I. I, you're gonna see an issue like you did in Major League Baseball, where they're gonna have to take best record percentages and figure it out. And unfortunately, that's gonna lead to some weird matchups. All right. So quick here, baseball story. A story you guys thought was gonna be the big one, but obviously not anymore. Uh, Randy Orez Arena who was a star for the Rays in this postseason. The ALC- Rays, of course. Hmm? ALCS MVP? Correct, the ALCS MVP. Perhaps one of their best players, arguably the best player for them in the World Series, arrested for domestic violence. Basically abducting his daughter from his ex-wife, essentially. And that's where the fun part comes in. So apparently he is I, – I think MLB is investigating it. Yeah, they're, and they're, they're 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 a statement. Well, well let's talk about the big guys, guys, big A, big A. Allegedly, the big A. Again, no, we must... that's been confirmed. And Major League Baseball is looking at it under its domestic violence protocols. That's confirmed. So okay. in terms of what we can expect, I mean, I, I, I can you use Domingo, uh, Domingo Herman as a bellwether in this case? No, no, absolutely. What do you mean by bellwether? As like a template moving forward to as to what we can expect uh, any kind of punishment might look kind like. Of two, kind of two different situations. I was going to say, I think the child abduction is worse in, in this case. I'm not talking about in terms of worse. I'm talking about what MLB will do. I mean... First I of mean, all, maybe baseball doesn't handle these... Because they've never really yeah. had to deal with these situations. They've never really had to deal with these they, situations. They, they, I'm going to say, they haven't had a... They haven't had an... Uh, you know these cut. Co- they haven't had an NFL 2014, basically. Where yeah, they haven't. They haven't. They've never. They they have not dealt with something in the magnitude of Ray Rice. Right. I mean, God forbid. But but, I mean, this if it shakes out to have been true. So again, we must use the word allegedly. This might be. This is pretty damn bad. I was gonna say. Well, as, has Randy Rosarena been moved to a commissioner's list of sorts? Not yet. No, not yet. He has not put out a statement, uh, but it, but it feels inevitable. It's it's probably going to and happen. If that happens. That means that's at least half a season worth of suspension. Can I make one uh, disclaimer, or I don't know, disclaimer statement that okay. you have to remember that the laws and regulations are different in where, wherever he was. Mexico. Mexico, Mexico. They are here, but that doesn't excuse the whole situation. Well, it also, absolutely does not. No. Also, I was going to say, also, I mean, bear in mind if we're bringing up the NFL, even after, you know, all the legal stuff like has been dropped, you, we've seen NFL handle out suspensions and everything. And you could say the MLB is going to do the same thing here. So I'm yeah. saying that this is going to be at least half a season, if not more, I, and if not an I, entire season. I told you, Tom, that I think he should be suspended for the whole season. I, I was going to say, and and what is the definition of a whole season? A whole normal season or just the whatever, entire trend? Whatever this season is, he should just not play. I was going to say, because now that's a whole other 
issue unrelated to this, but just because we talked about COVID and everything, MLB and MLBPA seem to, they're going to have to go back to the table. Well, I would say suspended without pay, sayonara, don't come back this season. That's my opinion on this whole thing. I don't know if MLB will be that harsh because I'd like to think that they would like to sweep this under the rug. It's a child deduction. I, 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 normally I do agree, Nick, but I do think for some reason, like you said, with the sweep under the rug, that it's going to be at least half the season. But now you have to remember something. If because the Rays were a contender this season, they're already AL champion this season. If that's a half, at least half a season, that's doesn't that mean? I would go, doesn't that mean a Rosa Reina's banned from the playoffs? Yes. Yeah, if, I, it, if it's half the season, you then the rules are technically you're supposed to be banned from the playoffs. There's one more thing you're leaving out. Also, allegedly, he punched his ex-wife's father. Also, who's elderly. Allegedly, also. Right. That, I when think it's trying to stop him from abducting his daughter. I mean, is, come on. Like this whole thing is ridiculous. I, I have no tolerance for anything that has to do with. Oh, oh but, yeah, well, neither do any of us. At, at, at the end of the day, if it's only like twenty games or something, I'm going to flip. It, yeah, it's going to be if it, if he ends up with a metaphorical and maybe literal slap on the wrist. Cadell move. Uh, see, I, I'm not inclined to say that that uh, Rob Manfred could be, you know, as bad as two checks Cadell, but he's getting he does, there. He, he does kind of he does kind of spin the wheel of punishment. Yeah, the wheel 20, of discipline. Yeah, twenty games in Major League Baseball is essentially two games. And, in the yeah, it's, it's essentially two weeks. Again, I'd like to think that Manfred wouldn't be that dumb, but again, here we I've are. I lost a lot of faith after this yeah, here, after here we, season. Here we are. Surprise me, Rob. And you know what? Surprise this, me. That's to a point I made to Tom, and I, I want to bring it up as well to Nick, that it doesn't matter if you're an athlete or a typical everyday Joe. It, it doesn't matter. If you do something like domestic violence. Go yeah. to jail. It does, I don't care how famous you are. Your ass needs to be put in jail if you're abducting children. Do not oh, pass go. You accuse us of being homers. This all this same thing happened with the role of this Chapman, and I, he probably should have been in jail then. We crapped all the Chapman. Domingo Herman. Herman. Wait, Domingo Herman, Herman too. Dude, I just so, uh, like you just said, Nick. We're Yankee fans. We crapped all over Chapman and Herman for doing this stuff. Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. Exactly. Okay. Guys, before we put a bow on our 2020 campaign, we have another week of uh, rapid run now to do. So let's and get right into it. When uh, since we're not going to have episodes, we will post our picks on our social media. So then yeah, we have- make, sure you, yeah make sure you follow us. Well, yeah. I'd say I'd say bye. Like, well, I don't know how we're going to do week 13 because we might not have Thursday night football. But basically, if under a normal NFL week, the day of Thursday night football, we'll we'll, put, we'll put it all after the week. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so week 12, uh, we're going to start things. Oh, oh, by the way, like I just said, we're not certain on the status of Ravens-Cowboys, so we're not going to do a Thursday night week 13 pick here. We're just going to focus on tomorrow and Monday's games. So, And and, and technically, we made our pick for Ravens-Steelers already, and I think we're all still saying Steelers if that game goes on. Okay, so we're focusing on today and tomorrow. So we're going to start in Cincinnati, the Giants and the Bengals. As I have said to you guys and said to my coworkers, with the Bengals losing uh, Joe Burrow for the rest of the season due to injury, I feel so horrible for Burrow, by the way. Um, but losing Burrow, losing Mixon, Gio Bernard, he's in concussion protocol. For somehow they think they're gonna, he's gonna play. I don't th- see it. It's four games. I'm, I'm just saying, the Giants to make the playoffs in that incredible NFC lease, they need to win Week 17 against. The Cowboys, they need to upset like they're playing like the Browns, the Ravens, and and Seahawks during December. They need to get one upset win, and most certainly, above all else, they need to they win must, this game. They must win up. this game. They must. And, win- and I will say, I think I think they're going to scare us with a potential choke job, but I still think the Giants are going to pull this out. As am I. This is the one game where you could say the Giants better win it, or they're going to be a, a more of a laughing stock than they should. Yeah, be. absolutely, Giants. It's kind of satisfying to be able to say that they have to win this game to have a chance. I was going to say it feels nice that it's near December and we're actually talking. Don't get used to it yet. <laughs> I know it's a fluke, but it, can I let me have my fun? Damn it's it, the NFC least. Come on, let me have my fun. Okay, 
over in Minnesota, the Panthers and the Vikings. After the Vikings choked to the Cowboys, mm. and there's and P, PJ Walker did very good as a fill in. I will say that. By the way, is is uh, Thielen in protocol still? Yes, Thielen yes, is, is in protocol, so he will be out. Uh, so it will be the Justin Jefferson game because here's my thing: PJ Walker was good as a fill in, but I think that Vikings defense will be too much, especially like I just said after the Vikings choked to the Cowboys. I don't Minnesota. Is McCaffrey healthy? No. Oh, he just got ruled out, by the way. Before yeah, he we just got ruled out. out. So I'm God, taking the Vikings. This game is going to be terrible. Ugh. Agreed. It's going to be the game of defense. Uh, and, this, and if it's the game of defense, I'm taking the Vikings. Okay. Raiders and the Falcons. The Spider oh. 2Y and the Choke Job. By the way, if you want to see a good meme of John Gruden, go to our Twitter account at ETB Sports. I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, as, as, as Mimi the has. The Choke versus the Joke. As Mimi and a joke as he is, the Raiders are actually decent this season. I, I got to go with the Raiders. Yeah, I am too. The Falcons are a shit show. Raiders. The Chargers and the Bills. Okay, so the this, Bills. This is a good one. I was going to say, here's the thing. It could be. Yeah. The, the, the Bills are a playoff team. They're probably going to win the division unless the Dolphins surge back somehow. <laughs> um, the Chargers are not because they don't have good pieces around Justin Herbert. But here's the thing. The Bills' defense is susceptible to a guy like Justin Herbert who throws all over the place and puts up massive numbers. I think this game is going to be a lot closer than people think. I'm still going to take the Bills, but I think people this is going to be a lot closer than was expected. I'm going to go one step further than you. I'm picking the Chargers because I do Ooh. believe that a suspect defense against a gunslinging quarterback – Bad things do tend to happen, so I'm taking the charges. So you think that a few of those gunsling passes might actually make it to the end zone? You're saying? Keenan Allen and Mike Williams could have a big day. Call me a fool if you want, but that's – In my opinion, I don't know if I would say they're – Well, well, the running back situation in in the Los Angeles is also a big question mark. Austin Eckler's not back yet. You have injuries all over the place there. They might be forced to gunsling with Justin Herbert. Yeah. And I reserve the right to be wrong. I often am. <laughs> no, but that's you're right in this sense, Nick, that the Bills' defense is questionable at times. So, um, you, so you, who are you picking? Are you are you going with me? Or are you going I'm, with him? I'm saying this is a 50 50 game. I wouldn't call it a Chargers favorite. <laughs> oh, come on. No, Don't but, but you're... give us a pick. No, I'm just saying. I, this no, is my... but I, he's saying what I'm saying that pe- this is a lot closer than people think. Right. So. I'm not a Herbert supporter yet, so I have to take the Bills. I need to see, see more. Experience. See, I disagree. I am a Herbert supporter. I don't think he has – the he, they don't have good pieces around him. I think once he develops his game, he will he will win many games in the future. Okay, the Titans and the Colts. Here's an interesting showdown, a divisional showdown. Uh, I'm going to go with Titans on this one. I'm going to go Titans as well. Colts made a very good showing against the Packers. The they other... do. They they can have good showings when they want to, but I just think the Titans are gonna. It's defense. when they it's when they want to, and do they want to? The defense is a problem. So Titans, Browns, and the Jaguars, guys. If the Browns win, this guarantees them at least a five hundred record for the first time in forever. Is that sad? Well, That's really. I, it's it's sad, but. I feel happy for the Browns. It's too early to say the Browns are back, but I hate to say this, but the Browns are the better team in this. In yeah, this the Browns. Are it's the gonna best. happen, right? Browns. It's gonna, I'm gonna pick the Browns. Yeah, it's gonna. Uh, I believe. I believe. I believe. Okay, <laughs> Cardinals and the Patriots. This, one, this one's not great, but it's interesting. I'm gonna say. See, here's my thing. This is the opposite of Charger Bills. I think this is more distant than people think. I think the Cardinals are head and shoulders above the Patriots. I'm going to go Cardinals. Yeah, they're going to be a team to watch going forward in the playoffs, too. Cardinal. Kyle Murray, Cardinals. (laughs) Dolphins and the J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. We have an interesting development, though. Yes, I think he's not going to play. And Sam Darnold is coming back to play. So, uh, wait, is he back? I thought Flacco was going. He got named the starter. Yesterday. Okay, so oh, Sam oh, is back, oh, and yeah, yeah, go Sam ahead. is back, and the Fitzception is back. So it's a little reunion of sorts. Yeah. So, Mister Jet fan, does this improve any of? Does this improve their chances? <sighs> no. 
No, it doesn't. I'm sorry. You're, you're going to get embarrassed by Ryan Fitzmagic on the other side. Dolphins. Uh, yeah, Dolphins. Okay, Saints and the Broncos. So the Broncos, like we said, have had their own COVID troubles as of late. The Saints, Taysom Hill probably once again is going to go to the quarterback. He looked really good last week. He did. He did. Alvin Kamara is probably going to run all over the field again. I'm going to go with the Saints. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm picking the Saints. 49ers and the Rams. Uh, the four, like I said, like I've said before, the 49ers, even when they're banged up, they've shown they can have a good performance. But I think the Rams defense, like how they humiliated Tom Brady, is just going to be too much. They're gonna, they're gonna run roughshod. So I'm, I'm picking the Rams. Yeah, I'm taking the Rams. The Niners have been hurt all year long. Hello? Uh -oh, he... Yeah, we're here. Yeah. Oh, you did guys he... disconnected. You're, you're disconnected from me for a sec. Uh, I'm, I'm here, yeah. Oh, we yeah. see you. Okay. Yeah, we're okay. here. Okay, Br we had a brief... Uh, brief uh, technical issue. Yeah. Okay, on to the Chiefs and the Buccaneers. Speaking of Tom Brady. This is an interesting one. Okay, so things are not uh, things are not well in in Brady Land, and apparently he wants to strangle the life out of Bruce Arians. So are you surprised by this, though? No, 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 no. no we're dealing with exactly. a sociopath. Exactly my point that this this whole thing is a shit show blowing up. Uh, I we, think someone... We, we had a concern. We had a concern going into the season that Tom Brady and Bruce Arians might, uh, you know... They want to kill each other. Yeah. Not surprised. That, I mean, that being the case, it's still the Chiefs, so I'm going to pick the Chiefs. I, I'm going to do one better. Not it, not that it's still the Chiefs. I'm going with Chiefs. I think the Chiefs by a mile. I think it's going to oh, be another yeah. blowout. That is, that, that is some bold picking right there. I was, about to say, I was about to say, I think the Chiefs win by uh, three, four touchdowns at least. I wouldn't go that far. I would say, you know, at least, I'd say double digits. I don't know if I'd say three, no, four I, touchdowns. I would say they're going to win, but I think Brady can make it close. You can hold me back. You can go back. You can rewind the tape next week. It's going to be three, four <laughs> touchdowns. Okay, Sunday night football and the only Sunday night football. Uh, it's going to be the Bears and the Packers, the divisional matchup. Well, if the Bears can't win against the Vikings, how are they going to win in Lambeau against the Packers? They're Trick not. Question. They're not. Who's the oh, quarterback? Who's oh the quarterback? that's right. Mitch Trubisky's back. <laughs> Mitch Trubisky is back because Nick Foles is hurt, I think. So, yes. uh, yeah, I'm picking the Packers because uh, well, the Bears are good, but it's not. It's not because of Mitch Trubisky. The only way they the Packers lose this game is if they play down to their competition. That's it. But, all right, and Monday Night Football. Um, joke. Uh, joke. Yes, Seahawks. Seahawks. Yeah, the Eagles are going to get embarrassed. Yeah, Seahawks. <laughs> all right. So I want to thank you guys. You know, for another great year of shows. I want to thank all of you who welcomed us on Facebook Live once we moved here. We grew. We, we, grew. we really did. We and actually we grew for one. Yeah, we owe it all to you guys. So seriously, thank you. Thank you so much. We so, owe you everything. We over the next couple of weeks, we have plans, like we said, for the next week you're gonna see the first episode right after COVID. This was back in the podcast days before mm -hmm. we, what were we at that point? Because I don't even remember. No, we were still empty the bench. We, we were, were empty. Podcast. Were okay. Just were we at the bench? Okay. We were. Yeah. We were like episode twenty-eight or something. Yeah, I think so. Wow. Okay. So we have that coming, and then we're actually going to go th back in the archives to all the different people we talked through in the COVID situation. Right, well, 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 as part of the road back, where we're going to detail each league's road back from being shut down due to COVID to, you know, in most cases to to declare a champion. Or in NFL's case, just getting the season started. Yeah, believe it or not, I think we have at least uh, one person per sport. I think we covered it all, and I think we even covered UFC. We have an interview there, right? I was gonna say we have yeah. the, the last the last episode of this uh, little series is going to be the NHL and just everybody else miscellaneous. So yeah, we covered NHL, UFC. We had we spoke to uh, Jesse Rogers, who was really one of the top guys in Major League Baseball. Uh, I sat down with a few people in the NBA. 
Uh, we covered a bunch of NFL. We had we covered it all. So just be on the lookout. We're working on some new stuff too. We're working on some reports on dates off that we're going to do so we can cover our content mm -hmm. bases. I guess well. we have some we have some stuff in the new year that's being planned. So just bear with us. That's partially why we need the month off. Besides the holidays, we're working on the stuff so it's ready by the first week of January. So let enjoy a little look back on you know the year that was 2020 as much as we want to look back on the year that was 2020. But until 2021, the Nick for there and Nick Morgan on Tom Alvano. Advance in advance notice. Have a happy Hanukkah, a happy, a Merry Christmas, happy holiday season, gentlemen. You, you know, I think I speak for everybody else where I say, on behalf of everybody here at MTA the Bench, thank you so much for welcoming us on the into the streaming world. Thank you for as good of a 2020 as we could have. And um, yeah, we'll see you next year. See you next year, everybody! See you next year.